Hello and welcome to another in the Printmaking from Home series from High Point Center for Printmaking. My name is Tyler Green. I'm the Education and Community Programs Manager at High Point. Today we are doing cardboard relief. It is a type of printmaking using, you guessed it, cardboard. Let's get started. So I have here a few examples of the types of printmaking that we'll be doing. I highly recommend you test out the materials that you're going to use on a small scale. So take a look at how that little piece of cardboard has a bunch of holes punched in it. I've then inked that up and printed it onto a piece of paper. This technique is going to be very similar to stippling, a drawing technique, where you build up a series of dots to create different tones. So you can go from dark, where you have lots of little dots together, to light, where you have very few or no dots. The prints that we're going to make are going to be the inverse of that. So every dot we make will be a light area. Here are our supplies. First off, we've got our cardboard, we've got a sharpie, we've got a ruler, a rag, a pencil, a pencil sharpener, a scribe, an intaglio scribe, a Whistler stylus. We've got a ballpoint pen, an X-Acto blade, newsprint, mulberry printmaking paper. There are different printmaking papers you can use. This is what I recommend. These little packs of black ink brand mulberry are a great place to start. We've got black Caligo Safe Wash Relief Ink. It's an oil-based ink that cleans with soap and water. We have a brayer, speedball brand palette knife for moving and mixing ink, some painter's tape, a baron for printing, a wooden spatula for printing. We have a spray bottle. Also make sure you have a place to ink up. On the right side there, I have a piece of glass. You can use plexiglass, mylar, anything that is not going to absorb the ink. When you are selecting cardboard, I would recommend using the thinner, more densely corrugated cardboard. You'll see that difference right there. The typical thicker stuff seems to not work quite as well. All right, I'm going to cut down my cardboard using my cutting mat, making sure those edges are square. You could, of course, make all sorts of different shapes and sizes. Cut down a piece of newsprint for my sketch. I'll add all the tonal values that I want to try to achieve. And I'm going to tape my drawing to my plate. And I'm going to use a sharpened pencil to go around my image to transfer it. Then I'll have a guide, basically a connect the dots of where my image is going to go. Now I'll pull that to the side. I can now draw on my plate. You could draw it completely on your cardboard if you'd like. You could use Sharpie to really bring out those lines. Then you won't forget where everything is going. Sometimes I do that. I get in too close to the drawing and I forget what my plan is. So there we go. Got my plan. Now we can start our stippling. I'm going to start with my pencil here, making sure that's nice and sharp. I'm poking holes into my cardboard. Wherever I poke my holes, those are going to be white areas. So I'm starting with my lightest area, putting in a lot of holes, and that will build up a lighter area, a highlight. You can see I'm working on different tones. I want kind of a fade from that, the highlight around that center circle. I want it to get darker from there. I also want a shadow towards the bottom, and I want that top area to be totally dark. Now it's time to get our printmaking supplies. We got our brayer, ink, palette knife, tape, spatula, baron. We've got our papers, our spray bottle, our rag. We can start inking our plate. I'll start with taping my plate down. I want to make sure that doesn't move as I'm printing. Be very careful, this ink can stain. It is a permanent professional ink. Uh, don't work on carpet. <laughs> Okay, let's spread out that ink. Uh, I'm making my well right now, making sure there's no pieces of dust. I'm going to work that into my brayer. And even out the ink 
lower down. That's where I'm going to even out my ink. I want a nice even layer of dots. Slow motion, instant replay of how I am making sure the ink is even. I'm rolling down and leapfrogging back up. Now, if we end up with too much ink, you'll see there's streaks in the ink instead of that nice orange peel texture. So what I'm going to do is pick up the ink that's on my palette and move it back up to my well, and then even just the ink on my brayer down below, like so. And I should lower the amount of ink. Here's an instant replay showing how to get that even. Okay, now we can start inking up our plate. Charge up your brayer and charge up your cardboard. I'm doing one section at a time, making sure I'm inking up evenly. We want to be really careful when we're putting our ink on that we're never putting too much on there. If we have a glob of ink somewhere on our brayer, that can get into the little dots and ruin our picture. So a nice even, thin layer, building up the ink. You can see it's looking nice and velvety. Let's put down some newsprint and see what that looks like. This is what's called a proof. We're testing out what our image looks like. We're proving that it exists or that it prints well. Okay, I'm pressing down now with the spatula. This is going to give the most pressure. That's looking really nice. Let's print again. So the great thing about printmaking is we can keep making prints. Okay, I'm inking up, recharging, getting a nice even layer, doing a really good job not getting ink on my cutting mat. Let's use the nice paper now. We're going to use mulberry. Lay that down very carefully, pressing down with our hand first. Nice even pressure. We can check to see how things are going. Let's put down newsprint. Sometimes the mulberry will start to break down with all that rubbing and pressure. It's looking pretty good. If I want my image to be even more solid, what I could try is to spray water on the back. I just want a, a nice fine mist of water. I'm not oversaturating, just a nice misting of the back. That'll help the paper absorb the ink a little bit more. Let's press down again and take a look. So it's going to be a little bit harder to pull up when you dampen the paper. Be careful not to get creases as you're pulling it up. You can see I'm pushing that crease out. Okay, nice and easy. Pull from the corner. There we go. Let's do one more print before we go. I'm going to use a colored piece of paper, this nice mustard paper that's in that same pack I showed you of mulberry. Okay. All right. I like how that turned out. So we're still getting a lot of salt. You'll see the paper showing through. That's okay. I actually like how that looks. Let's clean up. I'm going to use these little jars that I have and put all the ink back that I can in here. You can also use tin foil. If you've ever made a tin foil dinner camping, you could put your ink into something, a mini version of that. Make sure it's nice and sealed so you can use it again. We'll roll off the ink on our brayer as much as possible, take off as much ink off our palette knife. And I'm doing this on a scrap piece of newsprint. You can have some fun with that too and make it its own little art project. You can also use a razor blade to take off even more ink. Be careful, of course. It's a sharp, sharp thing. Now I'm using a spray bottle and a rag to wipe down my glass. You'll see how easy that is with just a little bit of water. The damp rag will work well for my palette knife and razor blade too. Okay, cleaning the brayer is going to be trickier. We need dish soap right onto the rag. And we're going to put that dish soap right into the ink on our brayer. No water at this point. With this Caligo Safe Wash ink, that's really important. Work that soap into the brayer until, until you're getting these nice streaks of ink. Make sure the soap is mixed with all of the ink. Otherwise, it won't rinse off. Okay, that came off nicely. That means I mix the soap in with everything. If that doesn't happen, add some more soap. Try to work into it. Let's rinse off the rag so we can use it again. 
And now let's take a look at what we've made. We've got our first proof and we've got our two prints on nicer paper. The first one is pretty salty. It's got a lot of the paper showing through. You can use that to your advantage. You can get interesting textures with that. You could purposefully dent the cardboard to get different textures. I, I like having that, that grain of the cardboard. It makes me think of relief printing with wood. Some relief printers will use a wire brush to bring out the grain of the wood. They want it to have a handmade feel. They want it to feel natural. They want qualities that you can't get just drawing something. If you were to draw something like this, it would take a long time to get those textures. When we're printing like this, it can happen relatively quickly. And you can do multiple of them, which is really cool. So you can give some to your friends. You can hoard them all for, for yourself. You could fill your whole walls with these cardboard prints if you want. One quick note I want to make before I leave you to make your masterpieces is this type of printing is going to flip. That is a mirror image. It's going to flip when you print it. So if you are doing words, lakes, or states, make sure you flip those around. Or if you want your image to face a certain way, I hope you all have a great time making your own prints. Experiment a little, see what works for you. I did it in this particular way. There's lots of different ways of printing relief and making something like this work. So have fun and happy printmaking.